Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Project, welcome to the 35th Annual Law Enforcement Memorial Ceremony. Thank you to those who are able to join us today to honor our fallen heroes. My name is Heather Axman of the Washington State Patrol, and I have your honor and privilege today to be your Master of Ceremonies. At this time, would you please stand for the presentation of colors by our combined honor guard and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Spokane County District Court Probation Officer, Allison Brucci. Honor guard, uniform personnel, out and hoot! You may be seated. At this time, we will have the laying of the memorial wreaths by Spokane County Sheriff John Knowles and Spokane Police Chief Craig Meidel, accompanied by the Honor Guard Commanders. The laying of the wreath is done in honor and remembrance of those officers and canines who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty.
At this time, I would like to welcome Chaplain Mickey Tudor of the Spokane Police Department Chaplaincy to give the invocation. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we gather here today to honor the memory of our fallen law enforcement officers who gave their lives in the line of duty. We pay our respects to those who selflessly served and protected our communities. And we remember their bravery and their ultimate sacrifice. We recognize the families and loved ones of these officers who also made a sacrifice by supporting the, their loved ones in this service. They know the risk that comes with the job, yet they continue to support their officers, even in the darkest of times. We are grateful for our law enforcement officers who continue to serve, putting themselves in harm's way to protect our communities. We appreciate their dedication and their service, and we honor their commitment to the oath they took to protect and serve our communities. Thanks to all who are here to remember and honor our fallen officers and their families. Let us also remember the continued service of all law enforcement officers who put their lives on the line every day to keep us safe. May their memory and legacy continue to inspire and remind us that sacrifices made in the line of duty. May they rest in peace and may we always remember their service and their sacrifice. Amen. Thank you for being with us here today. I would like to recognize our distinguished guests in attendance. Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward, Spokane County Sheriff Knowles, Spokane Police Chief Meidel, U.S. Border Patrol Spokane Sector Chief Lloyd Esterling, Spokane Valley Police Chief David Ellis, Judge Zapone, Spokane County Commissioner Josh Kearns, Spokane Valley Council, Councilman Arnie Woodard, and all visiting sheriffs, police chiefs, survivors, and family members. In 2022, there were 245 officers that gave their lives in the line of duty. In just this past month, 13 more law enforcement officers have died in the line of duty. In 2023, year-to-date total for the line of duty deaths is 28 compared to the 101 this time last year. COVID-related deaths have risen to an additional two deaths this year. We gather today to remember their names. May we, rem may we remember them all. At this time, I have the special honor and privilege to introduce to you our special guest and keynote speaker, Mr. J.C. Shaw, founder and CEO with Beyond the Call of Duty. Mr. Shaw's professional background includes over 15 years as a law enforcement officer, reserve sergeant with the Yakima County Sheriff's Office. In 2002, he and his partner, Sheila Leslie, established a private security company to support communities all across, all across Washington, which has expanded into Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and Alaska. In 2019, Mr. Shaw played an essential role in establishing Beyond the Call of Duty, a local charity to honor our fallen heroes and their survivors across this great nation. For the past three years, he has led a team of writers and a rolling memorial to each of these departments and communities to honor these heroes, their families, coworkers, and their communities. There's been a new memorial produced each year displaying our hero's name and picture. You can see the current one on here displayed today. To date, Mr. Shaw and his team have traveled over 62,000 miles visited 559 police departments and communities and honored 1,262, I'm sorry, 1,264 fallen heroes and their families. Please join me in welcoming Mr. J.C. Shaw. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank Heather with Washington State Patrol for introducing me. It's not about me, though. I want to thank Susan Walker with the Pro Chair, a Pro Co Chair with Law Enforcement Officers Memorial, for allowing us to be here. And our distinguished guests, thank you. We're here today because beautiful men and women 
protect and serve their communities. These men and women pay the ultimate sacrifice. That's why we're here. I want to thank uh, the families of, that are here, Ms. Ray, Ms. Shui, Ms. Gutierrez, Ms. Brown. What is the word sacrifice to all of us? What is that one word? Many in the audience today look at the memorial and say they paid the ultimate sacrifice. But we often tend to remember the sacrifices that are done daily. When you have a narcotics officer working undercover and the spouses and the children can't go to the local mall because he'll be recognized or seen. And so for four or five years, they don't celebrate things in the public. They don't go to local places. When you have uniform officers that tend not to spend and go to a restaurant with their families, especially in this day and age, because all the negative that's out there. These are the sacrifices. But more importantly, the emotional sacrifices that follow when an officer is fallen. Their world stops. It stops when the phone call came, stops when the officers arrived at the door to notify them. They remember every second. They remember the last meal that was made. They remember the last words that were said. That's the sacrifice. Those are the sacrifices that most people don't realize. The sacrifice of the children growing up now with a parent that's not going to be there for soccer practice, for choir practice, for an event. The sacrifice of their children growing up with another birthday without a parent or not being able to go to the first dance or not having their dad and mom there. The sacrifice of not being able to be walked down an aisle. Those are the sacrifices. A peace officer or a peacemaker endures a lot in their day-to-day -day operations, whether it's investigating a case involving a child rape and the emotional aspects that go towards that. A peace officer that responds to an accident call and then has to do a notification because the person was deceased. These are emotional aspects that all of our good men and women today endure. These are the emotions that the chaplains have to hold that peace officer up or talk to administration and say, we need to do something for our team. I have a lot of families that I've met over the last four years. And all of them have a story, and I could go on for days talking about them. The Ornelius family that is new to our area, they just moved from California last year and live in Idaho. Art Ornelius retired from LAPD just this year. His wife retired from CHP two years ago. Andy was killed in the line of duty CHP motor unit two years ago. Their young, youngest son now just graduated with CHP motor unit and is carrying on the tradition. These are the families that I meet. And Andy was killed two weeks after he celebrated Thanksgiving with his family in Idaho. So I ask you all to take a moment today. I ask you all to recognize those uniforms that stand amongst us, to ask them and thank them for what they do, for the selfless job that they do. I ask you to look at all the survivors that are here today and thank them. That's correct, you heard me correctly, thank them. Because their hero is on that rolling memorial. But we often forget who they are. They are the hero's hero that allowed a beautiful hero to reside amongst us. They are the hero's hero that allowed their hero to wear this beautiful uniform and be the peacemaker that they are. So thank them for that. Thank them for allowing that hero to be part of us for a few years or more. 
Beyond the Call of Duty was founded for a number of reasons. I wanted the memories, just like what Susan does with the project here. 35 years in the making of keeping this memorial running, allowing these names to be heard every single day, 365 days. And that's what we started this for. We wanted the memories of every single law enforcement officer in this state, in the United States, to be heard over and over and over again. We wanted the stories of each individual to be brought to life, not that they were a uniform officer or a peace officer, but we wanted the stories of how they bought a brand new boat because it was pretty cool, or how they fixed a boat and sold it after using it, or how they loved to ride a motorcycle and, and just visit places. Those are the stories we want. We want to put a name to the face we want to put a story and bring out the heart of each and every peacemaker. To date, we have done scholarships for children. We have uh, paid over $20,000 in training to departments. We have spent over 60,000 in canine programs. We have spent over 10,000 in just producing memorials so that the loved ones for that department could be remembered. And we do sacrifice. We are a volunteer-based organization, not paid. And we do give up our summers for this. There are bad apples everywhere. If you look in from doctors to teachers to politicians to kids in a fast food joint, that doesn't mean that we don't go to the hospital. That doesn't mean we don't go to the school to learn. That doesn't mean we don't go to the fast food joint to eat. Our peacemakers, we have 99.9% .9 of them that have chosen this profession, not for the money. It's for what they do. They give back to the communities. They serve 150% in communities. What is not often said is what the troopers do on the weekend when they go talk to sporting events, what the Sheriff's Department does and puts together fundraisers for different events or the, the chiefs of the, uh, the departments do the same thing and how officers are giving up their time to do this. That's not said. The primary role of government in any community is for the safety of our citizens. Our law enforcement tracing back centuries is how we protect our communities. We need to protect our law enforcement officers with funding, with training, and support that they, what they do for their jobs and what they need for their jobs every day. Thank you for your time today. God bless each and every one of you for our survivors. We love you. We won't forget your loved ones. And bless you all. Thank you. I would like to welcome Chaplain Stu Volgeman of the Washington State Patrol Chaplaincy to give the prayer for the families. Good morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather here today to memorialize the heroes that we've lost, we also lift up their families. For these families, we ask for your intercession. We ask for your comfort as they live with their loss. We ask for your peace in knowing their loved one's sacrifice, as well as their sacrifice was worthy and noble for your peace father from the Holy Spirit is a peace that passes all human understanding may they come to know in the deepest recesses of their hearts that the ultimate sacrifice of their loved ones will not be forgotten but will always be remembered and honored through these memorials and that they are now and forever woven into the fabric of our communities. 
Jesus. In your holy and precious name. Amen. You may be seated. As I introduce the speakers to give the eulogies for the heroes we honor today, I would like to invite a family member to come up while the eulogy is read and then unveil their loved one's name on the memorial wall, retrieving the card and the rose to take with them. To give the eulogy for Special Agent Edward Savage, I would like to welcome BNSF Senior Special Agent Ian Ashley, Northern Pacific Railway. We're going to go back oh, just over 101 years on uh, this one. Um, Special Agent Edward Savage served for the Northern Pacific Railway. His end of watch was uh, January 23rd, 1922. Special Agent Savage was shot and killed in Leavenworth, Washington by an escapee he had just arrested and taken to the local police station. Agent Savage had located the escapee on a Great Northern train uh, after receiving notice that they were looking for him. He placed a man under arrest and transported him to the Leavenworth Police Department. The man was able to disarm the police chief and then shot both officers. Despite the wounds, they were able to subdue the man. The police chief was wounded in the arm while Agent Savage was wounded in the leg. Agent Savage's wound developed gangrene and he died eight days later. The prisoner was charged with first degree assault in connection with the incident, but acquitted. He was transferred back to the custody of the prison following his trial. Special Agent Savage had served at the Great Northern Railway Police Department for several years. He was survived by his estranged wife, son, and two brothers. To give the eulogy for fisheries patrolman William Williams, I would like to welcome Chief Chris Sutter to Laylip Tribal Police. Good morning. Uh, before we start, I want to recognize that uh, we're here today to honor William M. Williams Sr., who is a tribal fisheries patrol officer who died in 1965, 58 years ago. And standing with me is his grandson, James Williams, who is a sergeant in the Toledo Tribal Police Department and his great-grandchildren. Uh, before I read his eulogy today, I want to mention that we were here two years ago to honor one of our other fallen officers in the line of duty, Charlie Joe Cortez, 
was also a Tilep tribal fish and wildlife officer and memorialized on this wall. So this wall is very sacred to us and to all the families that are here today. And we're honored to stand with all of you who have lost loved ones and coworkers in the line of duty. Um, fisheries patrol officers, fish and wildlife officers are very, very important in indigenous communities and tribal governments because they not only protect the safety of the fishermen out on the water and they um, enforce the tribal codes pertaining to fish and wildlife, but fishing, hunting, and gathering has been a way of survival for indigenous people for millennia. And these are these very, very brave officers uh, risk their lives to uphold and support these inherent rights that the tribal people have in regards to hunting, fishing, and gathering, which were later affirmed in, in treaties with the United States government, but they're rights the tribes always had. And so in 1965, it was a very difficult job being a fisheries patrol officer because there was no support from the state for tribes. And uh, Officer William Williams Sr. was an enrolled member of the Tulalip Tribes. Officer Williams Williams Sr. grew up on the Tulalip Tribal Reservation and held many positions within the tribe, working as manager of utilities department and later public works. Officer William Williams Sr. eventually became a tribal Tulalip Tribal Fish and Wildlife Officer and was responsible for enforcing commercial fishing laws by patrolling the coastline and fishing areas. On July 15, 1965, William Williams Sr. went missing. He was reported to have been patrolling in the Quilcita Creek by boat. After searching for five days, William Williams Sr. body was located wedged in a log jam at the mouth of the uh, Quilcita Creek, which is near I-5. At the time of his passing, William Williams Sr. left behind his loving wife, Clara Ramona O'Day, whom he had married on February 9, 1935. They were devout members of the St. Anne's Catholic Church. Officer William Williams Sr. also left behind a son, William Williams Jr., and two daughters, Mary Ann Enoch and Patricia Alexander. Officer William Williams Sr. is succeeded in life by several grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Officer William Williams Sr. legacy continues through his son, William Williams Jr., who after serving in the Air Force during Vietnam, worked for the Marysville Police Department and later retired. And uh, then he came out of retirement to work for the Tulalip Tribal Police Department where he retired as a deputy chief in 2008. William Williams Sr. legacy further continues through his grandson, Sergeant James Williams, standing to my right with his two sons, who after working for the Darrington Police Department has been employed with the Tulalip Tribal Police Department since 2001. And it's just a great honor to, after all these years, provide formal recognition for Officer William Williams Sr. And we thank you very much. To give the eulogy for Detective Thomas Ray, I would like to welcome Assistant Chief Andrew Popachok, Bellevue Police Department. The Ray family and the Belby Police Department, thank you all for being here to celebrate and honor Detective Thomas Ray. Thomas Ray was born in Memphis, Tennessee. He was one of nine children. Thomas loved music, and he would later form a doo-wop group with some of those siblings. Music was an integral part of Detective Ray's life. It is something he is remembered for by his friends, family, and coworkers. 
I am sure many of them still remember the name of his Motown group, Timeless Soul. Detective Ray first entered the seminary, but determined that, that, that there was a, a different path and that was not the correct one for him. In the early 1970s, Detective Ray made his way to Seattle. He joined the Bellevue Police Department in 1978. He found a home in the department and a career path he loved. Detective Ray worked to move law enforcement forward and improve the organization and the culture of our department. He was a respected and honored member of the Bellevue Police Department. He was selected as a detective as well as a member of the hostage negotiations team, where he'd been known as a kind man who would talk to others with respect. In the department, Detective Ray was known for being the grill master for the annual Bellevue Police barbecue and picnic. He was described as one, by one of our former detectives as one of the guys that always went out and organized the Christmas luncheon. The Bellevue Police Department is like a family and no family is complete without eating together. Detective Ray was, had also a great sense of humor and he had that ability to tell a good story. These traits bring people together. They strengthen the bond that make us a family. Detective Ray brought our family, the Bellevue Police Department family, together. At home, Detective Ray's house was filled with family and his many friends. He adored his wife and his children. He brought music, stories, and humor into his home and his family's lives. Detective Ray proudly and honorably served the community for 24 years until his death on January 22nd, 2002. The Ray, uh, Detective Thomas Ray is survived by his wife, Eileen Ray, his five children, Jennifer, Michael, Jessica, Kelly, and Olivia, six grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. He is missed as much today as the day he was taken from this earth. Thank you. To give the eulogy for deportation officer Juan Rojas, I would like to welcome Spokane Chaplain Kevin Pyatt on behalf of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. I have the honor and privilege today of reading the eulogy for deportation officer uh, Juan Rojas of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. His end of watch was August 7th, 2020. And since 2020, uh, there's been over 900 officers who have died, uh, considered line of death duty, line of duty deaths from COVID. And our, our dear deportation officer Juan Rojas is one of those. Deportation officer Juan Rojas died as a result of contracting COVID-19 while serving at the Yakima field office. Deportation Officer Rojas has served with the United States Department of Homeland Security, Immigration and Customs Enforcement Office of Enforcement and Removal Operations for 18 years. He was 50 years old at the time of his death. To give the eulogy for Dep Deputy Daryl Shuey, I would like to welcome Sheriff Ed Troyer from the Pierce County Sheriff's Office.
On November 10th, 2020, Deputy Daryl Shuey, devoted husband and father to, passed away unexpectedly from a medical emergency at the age of 57 while on duty as the Pierce County Sheriff's Deputy. Daryl Wayne Shuey was born on January 26, 1963 to Herbert and Donna Shuey. He was a lifelong resident of the city of Gig Harbor, Washington, where he grew up with his brothers Daniel, Dennis, and Robert. In 1994, Daryl was hired as a deputy sheriff with the Pierce County Sheriff's Department, the job that he loved for over 26 years. Daryl's warm heart and cool head were a perfect fit for a career in law enforcement. He served his community with kindness and compassion every day on patrol. Year after year, Deputy Shuey signed up to serve in the busiest areas of patrol in Parkland, Spanaway. It was not close to his home, but it was where he was close to his heart. He believed that was where he was needed the most. In May 2006, Daryl married Karen, and they later became the proud parents of two children, a daughter and a son. His family gave Daryl his greatest joy and inspiration. In his spare time, Daryl loved racing Porsches, first and foremost, but he also raced motocross, motorcycles, and loved to go boating. Daryl loved being on the open water and his boat. Speed was his thing. Daryl was preceded in death by his father, Herbert, and his brother, Dennis. He is survived by his loving wife, Karen, their daughter, Hannah, son, Vaughn, and his mother, Donna, and brothers, Daniel and Robert. As a Porsche enthusiast, a quote from the company's founder, Ferdinand Porsche, seemed to perfectly fit Daryl's time on earth. Life itself is a race, marked by a start and a finish. It is what we learn during the race and how we apply it. That determines whether our participation had particular value. If we learn from each success and each failure and improve ourselves through this process, then at the end, we have fulfilled our potential and performed well. Deputy Shuey performed well. To give the eulogy for Patrolman Raymond Gutierrez, I would like to welcome Union President Chris Hall, U.S. Department of Energy. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Blessed are the peacemakers. Amen. Okay. So today I want to talk about uh, Raymond Gutierrez. Uh, a lot of people called him Johnny, but on patrol, he was known as Little Guts. That was his nickname. Uh, Johnny was a tactical response team operator for 15 years on a hamper patrol. Uh, prior to coming on a patrol, he served in the Army, and he was also uh, in the Army Reserve. He put in over 20 years doing that. In that time frame, he was a senior NCO. He was a drill sergeant, and I think as most of us here know, not everybody can be a drill sergeant. But it was Johnny's ability to adapt and to deal with anything thrown his way uh, that made him a good drill sergeant and made him such a good leader. Johnny brought those uh, attributes with him when he came to patrol, and as a result of that, we benefited from it strongly. Now, as much as Johnny would talk about and regale about his time in the military and his brothers, Johnny was a family man. He absolutely loved his family, loved his children, his grandchildren, and his wife, Kate, as he called her, his ride or die. So looking back on everything, um, it's hard to just sit up here and talk about someone's life in just a few minutes. But the one thing I can say about Johnny is that all of us benefited and anyone that had him come into their lives benefited just having that contact with him, being the quick-witted, unfiltered Johnny Gutierrez that we all love and knew. And he served his community, his country, and his family with honor and excellence. Thank you for coming. To give the eulogy for deportation officer Bradley Cam, I would like to welcome Spokane Chaplain Tracy Richards on behalf of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security.
I had the honor and privilege of reading a eulogy of Deportation Officer Bradley Cam. Deportation Officer Bradley Cam died from complications as a result of contracting COVID-19 in the line of duty while working on an assignment in Tacoma, Washington. Deportation Officer Cam had served with the United States Department of Homeland Security, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Office of Enforcement and Removal Operations for four years and was assigned to the Seattle ERO office. He had previously served with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Customs and Border Protection, U.S. Border Patrol at the Indio Station of the El Centro Sector for nine years. He is survived by his fiance, father, mother, and sister. Thank you, Deportation Officer Bradley Cam, for your sacrifice. To give the eulogy for K-9 Jedi, I would like to welcome Kamei Spencer, Seattle Police Department. I apologize, there was a little change of plan. Originally, I uh, had asked Kamei, my best friend, to speak on Jedi's behalf. My name is Anthony Ducre. I'm actually the uh, the handler that was Jedi's partner. So I'm affectionately known on the department as the guy that just drove Jedi around. Uh, majority of the people all loved him. They knew him. Uh, they didn't get to see the side that I got to see with him every day. And I'll keep it very brief. Um, I believe that the term hero is is vastly overused. Too many people are heroes for doing everyday things. But seeing my partner's name up here on a wall of heroes, uh, it's just a profound feeling. And the one thing I'll say to you is, uh, my four-year-old son said to me one, one night after, uh, about a month after Jedi had passed, that uh, he said, Dad, I'm glad that you're not in heaven. I'm glad that Jedi took your place. And it's the hardest thing for me to hear. Uh, my partner saved my life, legitimately saved my life. And I had always dreamed of the day that I'd be able to re retire him and give him a home and let him right off into sunset, and I was promptly reminded when I served in the Army, warriors aren't meant to retire. I uh, thank you, and I'm honored to be here. Love you, Jedi. To give the eulogy for Officer Donald Sahota, I would like to welcome Chief Jeff Morey, Vancouver Police Department. Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Morey, and I am joined here by Don's wife, Donise, and Don's mom, Darlene. And I can tell you, I knew Don for about three years before he left us. Um, and I can honestly say, I think the Don I knew would be very uncomfortable playing to a packed house like this. Don was an expert at everything, but liked to remain in the back to make sure everyone else always looked good. And literally, Don was an expert at everything. He was in our training unit. But prior, he started his police career about 30 years ago at another police department in the Portland metropolitan area called Gresham. It's a pretty decent sized city. He spent a short stint at the Port of Portland there at the Portland airport uh, before finding his home here in Vancouver. And I'll never forget the first time I saw Don, he had that smile on. And I've been always wanting to ask Darlene, was he born with that smile? Because I never saw Don have a bad day. In fact, every time I saw Don, he uplifted every, everyone else and he had the ability to make others around him better. And that's really the sign of just a true leader who's willing to exercise that courageous, courageous leadership. And I'm so proud of Don and the efforts that he gave to not just our agency, but to our community. And I would just like to say to Darlene, you raised one hell of a man. And Donise, you refined him so much better. 
Um, I will never be the man that Don Sohota was. A uh, giving, loving man. He was able to watch, watch his uh, beautiful daughter, Kylie, get married just the month, be, uh, the summer before he passed away. And his son, Colton, is now off in, in college. And our Vancouver family is very different. Don was our very first line of death duty. And my very first line of death duty I had to deal with in 30 years of law enforcement. So for those agencies and families who've had to do this before, my heart breaks for you. Um, but I can tell you this, I know Don's spirit is here today. Don loved to fly planes. He loved to work on planes. He loved to work on cars. Like I said, Don was an expert at just about everything. And uh, Don gave his life protecting his family. And there are a few dates that will always be emblazoned in my mind. Uh, the birth of my three children, the day 9-11 happened, and January 29th, 2022, and I got a call from the then Chief Deputy John Horch that Don had been shot and killed. I will never forget that day. And the national anthem I know will always be a different song for you, Donnie's. Um, and so thank you all for being here to share us our memories with Don. And I just can't thank you enough for sharing Don with us. Thank you so much. To give the eulogy for Deputy Dominic Collada, I would like to welcome Sheriff Ed Troyer, Pierce County Sheriff's Office. On March 16, 2022, Deputy Sheriff Don Collada died from a gunshot wound sustained the previous day during a SWAT team operation to attempting to arrest a three strike fugitive wanted on felony charges. Deputy Claude and the SWAT team leader were both shot and wounded by the suspect upon arrival outside the suspect's residence. Deputy Claude succumbed to his wounds the day after the shooting and in passing gave the gift of life to others through multiple organ donations. Don Claude was born into a proud military family on November 15, 1986 to Ray and Angie Claude. Don spent most of his life in Pierce County and after that he was stationed here after joining the military. His sister, Christina, served in the U.S. Air Force. According to his father, Dom was always fascinated by Army and loved to play soldier as a kid. Dom attended Bethel High School and graduated with the class of 2004. He went on to attend Pacific Lutheran University, where he studied political science and government. He also met the love of his life, Aaron, at PLU before graduating in 2008. They have been inseparable on life's adventures ever since. Aaron and Dom have a wonderful four-year-old son, Dylan. Dom loved to talk about Dylan and was always eager to share his pictures and milestone with others. Dylan has his father's charisma, smile, qualities that will continue to be adored by his family, friends, and department members for time to come. Dom completed the Army ROTC program at PLU and was commissioned as an Army officer in the U.S. Army. His first assignment was to the 1st Cavalry Division at Fort Hood, Texas. He deployed to Iraq twice as a platoon leader and then as a company executive officer. He became a military intelligence officer in 2012 and was stationed at Joint, ba Joint Base Lewis McCord as a captain. In 2016, Don was hired by the Pierce County Sheriff's Department, his top choice agency, and he attended the Washington State Basic Law Enforcement Academy, Academy Class 725, where he graduated at the top of his class and was selected by his peers for the Patrol Partner Award. He breathed, he breathed through field training in a manner that few rookies ever do and chose to work the night shift for many years because of the intensity of the work. He shared his knowledge as a field training officer and defensive tactics instructor. He quickly became a leader within all these teams. Dom was also assigned to the Sheriff's Department Central Patrol Division, Pierce Transit Police, and Edgewood Police. Deputy Claude was everything society hopes for in a cop. Major Claude was everything the military wants in its leaders and Dom Claude was everything you could wish for in a friend. Dom was the best example of these things because he's passionate about the variety of hard jobs he did throughout his life, and he loved the people that he did them with.
To give the eulogy for Officer Dan Rocha, I would like to welcome Chief Dan Templeton, I'm sorry, Templeman of the Everett Police Department. On behalf of the Rocha family, I would also like to thank all of you for being here and all of those involved in this uh, memorial project. Approachable, respectful, polite, fair, and familiar. These were all words commonly shared by community members to describe Everett Police Officer Dan Rocha. Officer Rocha was shot and killed in the line of duty on March 25th, 2022. At the time of his death, he was working as a patrol officer in North Everett. Dan aspired to do something that mattered in this world and give back to the community. He first dipped his toe in public service when he was hired as a parking enforcement officer for the Everett Police Department in 2017. As a parking enforcement officer, Dan quickly established himself as a hard worker with outstanding public relations skills. Shortly after his arrival at the Everett Police Department, officers saw personality traits in Dan that they knew would make him a successful police officer and they quickly began recruiting him to apply for a position as a fully commissioned officer. In 2018, Dan was hired as a police officer and was first assigned to patrol the same neighborhood in South Everett that he had previously worked in while employed at the Fred Meyer. While Dan was able to quickly reconnect with the neighborhood that he had formerly served, it was his ultimate goal to return to North Everett and patrol the streets that he had once lived in after he moved his family here from Las Vegas in 2011. In 2020, Dan finally landed his dream assignment as a day shift patrol officer in North Everett. This is where Dan faithfully served his community up until his passing. Dan was all about people and making sure that no matter the contact, he always allowed those he interacted with to maintain their dignity and self-worth. The community he served truly mattered to him and making each contact as positive as it could be was the most important to Dan. Dan made you feel important, like you were the only one who mattered when he was talking to you. He took the time to listen and treated everyone with dignity and respect. Dan was a hero to his family, to the men and women of the Everett Police Department and to the entire Everett community. He represented the best of the best, the one who would always lend a hand to anyone in need, the one who respected the badge and was proud of what it represented, and the one who was willing to lay his life on the line to protect the community he loved so dearly. Dan's loving wife, Kelly, sons, Thomas and Harrison, dads, Charlie and Mike, sisters, Morgan and Rayanne, sister-in-law, Maggie and brother-in-law, Matt, and the members of the Everett Police Department will never forget their wonderful memories of Dan, nor will we forget the ultimate sacrifice he made protecting and serving his community. Thank you. To give the eulogy for Officer Jordan Jackson, I would like to welcome Assistant Chief Andrew Papachok, Bellevue Police Department. Jordan's family thanks you for being here today to celebrate and honor him. Jordan was born on June 25, 1988 in Spokane, Washington. His adoption was prearranged at just five days old. His mom, dad, and sister drove across the state to bring him home. It would have been a tough contest to see, to say which of the family members was in love with him the most, but they all could agree that even from day one, he was the best thing that ever happened to each of them. And it was clear he was special. Several things were apparent about Jordan very early on. His natural social skills, his charisma, his ability to make friends and build connections everywhere he went, and the way he treated everyone like family. His natural athletic ability, his spontaneity and zest for life, and his loving heart. Right from the start, he had many interests and a very strong sense of himself. He always knew who, that he could believe in himself. He walked to the beat of his own drum. He was willing to take risks 
and he was always ready for the next adventure and never let those opportunities pass him by. All of these are just innate qualities about him that would make him be the building blocks of his life and the foundation upon he led such an incredible life. Jordan attended Arizona State University for two years and transferred to Central Washington University where he graduated with a communication studies degree in 2011. Jordan met his future wife and love of his life, Kelsey Fisher at Central Washington. He nervously carried the ring on his body as not to lose it in his luggage and proposed to her on Kauai on Christmas Eve, 2014. Jordan and Kelsey married in a beautiful ceremony that was full of love at Swan Trails Farms in July 16th, 2016. They subsequently had two incredible and precious children, Mackay four and Lennox two and a half, and it was the family of their dreams. Jordan was hired by the Bellevue Police Department in March of 2018. In 2019, his family moved to the Squaw Highlands and a year later to their home in Cleelum, Washington. Jordan transferred to Motors in May of 2020. He was named Officer of the Quarter in November 2022 and prior to his death had just been selected as a field training officer. As evidenced by the outpouring of comments in the community, Jordan was an incredible representative of law enforcement in the community. He took his role very seriously and he was the best combination of someone who had the physical ability, technical skill, and professional competence for the work, but also had the people skills and the heart to understand all parts of the job and build real connections with the community. Under all circumstances, he treated people well and was never too busy to take the time to connect while on the job. Whether it was showing a young kid his motorcycle or making time to attend a birthday party, or whether it was just having a supportive conversation with someone that was having a rough day. Above all, Jordan cherished his wife and children and devoted himself to being the, providing the best family experiences through the adventures, trips, and family gatherings. Jordan was an incredible husband and father. He built a beautiful partnership in his marriage, and he had a beautiful family that was filled with love, adventure, and fun. It was one of the greatest joys of his life to share the sense of adventure, love, and outdoors, and other natural skills and interests with his children, and to weave them into the tapestry of their young lives. Jordan's children are very strong and understand, and, and their understanding of how special they were to him, and the joy they gave him, and how much they were loved by him. The loss of Jordan in the world is one that simply is beyond measure, and his legacy will live on in the lives and hearts of those loved and those who love him. His bright light will never fade and you will never be far from us because he will be held so closely in our hearts. At this time, I would like to invite Chaplain Gary Losey of the Spokane County Sheriff's Chaplaincy to give the benediction. I would ask that you would please stand up for the benediction. Our Heavenly Father, as we meet today under the warmth and bright sun that shines above us, we think of the shining and brilliant example of those officers who have given their lives in the line of duty. We think of the warmth of their character and the love they shared with others. You have told us that there is no greater love than to give one's life for one's community. And these officers have shown that in every part of their life. We ask now that you would watch over them, you would bless them and care for them. And we ask, Lord, that you would be with their families, that they would remember how greatly they were loved and they loved those around them. 
Bless them. Bless the families. And may you remind us that one day we will again come together in a land made new for us. And we pray this in the precious and loving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Honor Guard, uniform personnel, attend. Who? Present. Who? Retire colors. Ladies and gentlemen, the Spokane Regional Law Enforcement M Museum and Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Project want to thank you for attending this memorial ceremony to honor our brave officers and canines who made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. Thank you to the Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Committee for organizing and making this ceremony possible. We would also like to extend a special thank you to Spokane Regional Air Support Unit for their flyover today, paying respect to our fallen officers the Motors Division, our Honor Guards, Spokane County Firefighters Pipes and Drums, Brendan McCoy with Amplitude Audio, Wilbert Precast for the engraving, Jerry Swanson for Spokane Police Department Public Information Officer Assistant, and beyond the call of duty of Watch Rolling Memorial. And a quick announcement for all uniformed personnel, upon dismissal, please proceed immediately front and center to assemble for a group photo. Ladies and gentlemen, one final thank you for your attendance today. This concludes the presentation of the 35th Annual Law Enforcement Memorial Ceremony. We hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Uniform personnel, dismissed!